Hey everybody, what's going on? We are out here at Forest Grove Memorial Gardens in Pleasant Grove, Alabama. We're here to visit a racing legend, a heck of a NASCAR driver, a life that was cut way too short, as that does tend to happen in racing, doesn't it? In a lot of sports, but definitely in racing. We're here to visit the grave and pay our respects to Neil Bonnet. Now, if this is your first time here, let me get the ad out of the way and say, hey, welcome. I hope you enjoy the content. If you do, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, you know, doing all those things. And if this isn't your first time here, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoy the content. And let's get this camera turned around. We'll walk around. We'll talk a little bit about Mr. Bonnet. We'll celebrate his life, talk about the tragedy, and we'll find his grave and pay our respects. Nice little cemetery. It's a cool little place. Um... I like the little little church. I zoom in over there so you can see it. So, Mr. Bonnet. Neil was born in a suburb of Birmingham called Hueytown in July of 1946. Bonnet began his NASCAR career as a protege of the 1983 Winston Cup champion Bobby Allison, working on the team's cars. Bobby is from Hueytown also. They're part of what's called the Alabama gang. I hope soon we can start visiting, you know, more of the Alabama gang and we can get us a compilation video of those together. That includes recent Hall of Fame inductee Red Farmer at the Allison family, Bobby, brother Donnie, and Davey, which Davey's passed away also. But Neil began driving in NASCAR in 1974 and he earned his first victory in 77 at the Capital City 400 in Richmond, Virginia. He had another victory in 77 at the LA Times 500, which would be the last Dodge to win in NASCAR until 2001. In 1979, he signed with the Wood Brothers, who replaced David Pearson, and it revived his career with three victories. He later won back-to-back -back World 600s, NASCAR's longest race, now known as the Coca-Cola 600, in 82 and 83, and back-to-back Bush-class victories in 83 and 84, including his first, in which he did not win a single pole from the previous season, but was selected as a wild card. In 84, Bonnet joined Junior Johnson's team, becoming teammates with Darrell Waltrip. In 85, he had one of his best seasons, finishing fourth in the points, while Waltrip went on to win his third championship. Bonnet holds the distinction of being the winner of the first ever NASCAR race held outside of North America when he won the 1988 Goodyear NASCAR 500 at the Calder Park Thunderdome in Melbourne, Australia. On April 1st, 1990, Bonnet suffered a life-threatening crash during the Trans South 500 at Darlington when his car slammed into Sterling Marlin's car during a 14 during during a 14 car crash on lap 212 he was left with amnesia and disney dizziness and retired from racing and turned to television becoming a race color commentator for tnn cbs sports tbs and others despite the setbacks bonnet was encouraged because he had secured a ride and sponsorship for at least five races in the 1994 season with car owner James Finch, including the season opening race Daytona 500 for Phoenix Racing. But on February 1st, 1994, during the first practice session for the Daytona 500, a shock mount broke, causing him to lose control of his Chevrolet on the track's high bank fourth turn. The car swerved onto the track apron and then up the steep bank before crashing into the wall nearly head on. Finally, tragedy struck the sports world again Friday. For the third time in 10 months, a NASCAR driver lost his life. Neil Bonnet died of injuries sustained from a head-on collision while practicing for the upcoming Daytona 500. The winner of 18 Winston Cup victories was 47 years old. That weekend, another racing death occurred as the 93 Goodies Dash four-cylinder champion Rodney Orr was also killed in a crash during the practices. There will be an air of tragedy hanging over Sunday's running of the Daytona 500. Two tragic deaths over a four-day span. The latest, Monday. 
Rodney Orr lost control and crashed hard on the track's second turn. The track was clear and dry. Conditions were good. Witnesses say his Ford Thunderbird flipped at a high speed and the driver's side roof hit the wall. Orr was pronounced dead upon arrival at hospital. The cause of death, massive head and upper body injury. So here we go. Always a winner. And here, you can see where it says bonnet. Beloved champion. Such a bummer, right? Like during practice, not during a race, one of those random parts breaks in the race car. Sends you up the track, into the wall. It's crazy to think. It's, uh, it's a bit of a bummer. Heck of a race car driver. That's why I came out here to do this. And like I said with the Alabama gang, there's quite a few of those buried around here that We've got to get around and get get all of them videoed and we can put all that in a collection because they were very instrumental in NASCAR, like between Bobby and Davey and Neil and Red Farmer and so many others, a part of that gang helped, I mean, help NASCAR grow, right? Like, I don't know if the gang is a part of the NASCAR Hall of Fame yet, but if not, they should be. Like, they helped contribute that much. And with Neil, rednecks, and with Neil, you really got to, uh, it's a bummer that it had to end the way it did. But like with so many other drivers that had been killed like this too, like it's some kind of freak part that breaks and then, you know, they're, they're just kind of along for the ride and they hope they either make it or sometimes they don't. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. Uh, we've got the merch and we got the members stuff and all, all that. I always try to, you know, throw that in sometimes. And, uh, yeah, you know, like this, this is the last thing I'll say before we go. Sometimes you see graves and you think, man, I wish it could be more, but that's just me being greedy. Like he probably didn't even want, like, you know, they have the, the always a champion thing. Right. And, um, he probably could have cared less about that. That's just something that was done extra. And that, you know, that's the wish of the family and the, the person that is here, right? That's just me being greedy, wishing that there was something, something cooler, right? Just because I feel like they deserve it. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little, this little run over here to uh, Pleasant Grove, which is almost in Hueytown. Like I can almost throw a rock from here and hit Hueytown. But thanks again. And you know what? You never know what you're going to find on the back roads. I'll see you guys next time.